this lecture we're going to study the extraction of aluminium and aluminium is a metal that we studied in the reactivity series and uh, before moving on let me first tell you how is aluminium found in the earth's crust it's a uh, it's a substance called aluminium ore which is known also known as so aluminium ore is known as bauxite and this bauxite has this compound mostly it's aluminium alumina which is aluminium oxide but there are a lot of impurities uh, uh, that are mixed with it most of these impurities are metal oxides like like iron oxide fe2o3 so it has other metal oxides mixed with it and the ore is known as bauxite now we studied previously when we were when we, when we were generally talking about the extraction of metals and what we discussed was that there are two ways of extracting iron one is that carbon is over here in the reactivity series and carbon is a very cheap element one way is reduction with carbon but that only applies to elements that are lower down in the reactivity series compared to carbon so so it would apply to elements that are lower down in the reactivity series. So that's reduction with carbon. For example, if you have if you had Fe2O3, then you can simply react it with carbon and carbon being more reactive, it's going to take away its oxygens and carbon dioxide would be formed and iron would be left alone as pure metal. So, and we can balance that equation as well. So it's going to be two Fe2O3 and three CO2s. So that's a balanced equation. So that was one way. But you can't reduce the, these uh, metal oxides, the ones that are higher in the reactivity series, with carbon. Aluminium oxide is not going to react with carbon because carbon is less reactive. So in this particular case, no reaction, no displacement reaction would occur because carbon is less reactive and it would not be able to extract this oxygen away or take away the oxygens away from aluminium. So for the more reactive elements, the method that would apply to more reactive elements is that are more reactive compared to carbon is electrolysis of molten electrolytes. So this is the method that would be applied to extract aluminium from alumina. So bauxite is aluminium oxide, but mixed with a lot of impurities. Most of those impurities are other metal oxides like iron oxide. So that's bauxite. And we're going to discuss how we're going to extract aluminium from aluminium oxide by the electrolysis of molten electrolytes. The first step in the extraction process requires the purification of bauxite. Now bauxite over here, which is aluminium oxide, has a lot of other metal oxides impurities mixed with it. Now one thing that you need to know about bauxite is that aluminium oxide is amphoteric. So you have amphoteric Al2O3. What that basically means is that aluminium oxide is uh, going to react with both acids and it's also going to react with bases. But on the other hand, other metal oxides like Fe2O3, they are basic in nature. So they would only react with acids. So what you do is that you take a bauxite, which is Al2O3, plus other metal oxides, let's take that as Fe2O3, which, are, which is our main impurity, and you react bauxite with NaOH. Now if you react with react bauxite with NaOH, NaOH is a base and base bases don't react with bases. What that means is that Fe2O3 which is basic in nature is not going to react. But aluminium oxide which is amphoteric in nature is going to react. And what that reaction is going to be, it's going to be Al2O3 reacting with NaOH and in the process it's going to produce NaAlO2 which is sodium eliminate plus H2O so there would be two NaOH so this is your balanced equation so this is sodium 
illuminate whereas Fe2O3 which is basic that will have no reaction whatsoever with NaOH so Fe2O3 with NaOH is going to result in no no reaction so that is what happens when you so the, in the first step you mix bauxite and try to dissolve bauxite in NaOH Al2O3 will dissolve in NaOH so Al2O3 will dissolve in NaOH but Fe2O3 will not dissolve in NaOH now since the amphoteric Al2O3 dissolves in NaOH and the basic Fe2O3 does not dissolve in NaOH the leftover Fe2O3 is simply filtered out so undissolved Fe2O3 undissolved Fe2O3 is filtered out and that's how you're going to get rid of Fe2O3 from bauxite and the resulting solution is only going to be pure alumina NaLO2 uh, sodium eliminate is uh, then mixed with water more water is added and uh, alumina is precipitated out uh, giving you uh, any which which would be in solution and you're going to get uh, aluminium hydroxide or uh, aluminium oxide Al2O3 as a precipitate so this precipitate is then filtered out and this would be your pure alumina which would be used uh, for electrolysis in the next step this is step 2 of the electrolysis of uh, aluminium which is the electrolysis of molten alumina we've already purified alumina so this is the diagram that we're going to use this is the apparatus we're going to use so you're going to notice uh, uh, these electrodes which are dipped into a container so these electrodes over here these are all all anodes they're connected to the positive terminal so all of them uh, anodes they are positively charged and they're made out of graphite so so uh, the material that is uh, they're made out of is carbon it's graphite and then you have a container over here so this container is also lined with graphite so that's also lined with graphite it's a graphite lined container and it's connected it's connected to the cathode so this is your cathode it's it's connected to the negative terminal which is your cathode and that's also made out of graphite there's a graphite lining surrounding uh, lining the container the reason we're using graphite or carbon is because it's very cheap and there's a there's this drain over here which is used which is going to be used to collect molten alumina in this container you put your solid alumina which is Al2O3 but you mix cryolite with it now the now solid alumina would not be able to conduct electricity or it would be it would take part in electrolysis because it's not going to its ions would not be free to move around so cryolite is added and what this cryolite which is Na3 ALF6 does is that it lowers the melting and melting points of this entire mixture so uh, originally al aluminium oxide alumina melts at around 2000 degrees centigrade but adding cryolite lowers that melting point to around 1000 degrees centigrade so it lowers melting point which makes it easier for us to melt it so it reduces economic cost less energy would be required to melt alumina and the way alumina is uh, converted into molten form is by uh, by passing a very large current is passed through around uh, six seven amperes is passed through it uh, which uh, produces enough heat to melt alumina and that is how uh, aluminium ions would then be able to freely move around and electrolysis would be possible the next step is electrolysis and your molten alumina contains two main ions one is Al3 plus and the other one is uh, O2 minus ions now in molten state these ions are free, free to move around so O2 minus ions will get attracted to anode so the positive anode is going to attract O2 minus which in the above diagram it's the electrodes over here these electrodes these are connected to the positive terminal so so O2 minus ions will be will be attracted so let's uh, write that down O2 minus ions will be attracted to these uh, electrodes which are positively charged connected to the positive terminal so all my 
oxen ions o2 minus ions are going to be attracted to that side and when they go over there they're going to lose electrons because the positive anode is going to take away electrons so all of them would start losing electrons so I've sh I'm showing how the electrons would be lost so o2 minus ions will be attracted to anode and the equation would be that o2 minus would end up losing uh, it has two electrons extra so it's going to lose those two electrons it's going to form a neutral oxygen atom but oxygen is diatomic it's never going to be a neutral single oxygen atom so it's going to be O2 for which you would need two oxygen ions and if you have two oxygen ions so two electrons would not be lost four electrons would be lost because each oxygen ion would be losing two electrons so four electrons would be lost so this here is your reaction that occurs at anode in the above diagram the reaction at anode is not going to stop at that point. What would happen is that the anode is made out of graphite. So the graphite anode starts uh, reacting with the oxygen that is produced. So all the oxygen gas that is produced over there, um, the graphite which is uh, carbon anode reacts with the oxygen and it will start to burn so the reaction would be that C the carbon which is uh, the anode is going to react with the oxygen it's going to produce CO2 gas and a, and it, combustion would start so the anodes would frequently burn out so they need replacement so anodes would be frequently replaced and that would add to the cost of this extraction process so anode burns and they need to be replaced frequently frequently now coming back to cathode cathode was the container the container was lined with graphite and it was connected to a negative terminal so this is the cathode so all my positive ion which in this case are the aluminium al3 plus ions they would be attracted to uh, to this uh, graphite lining so all my aluminium ions will be attracted to cathode which is the container walls so let's show this like this so all my aluminium ions are being uh, attracted by the container walls and at cathode they're going to gain electrons so the negative terminal is basically giving electrons so anything that reaches the negative terminal would be gaining electrons so your reaction at cathode which is the which is our negative terminal so my reaction at uh, cathode is going to be Al3 plus goes there gains ends up gaining three electrons and forms aluminium molten aluminium and this molten aluminium is going to settle at the bottom so it's all all of this is going to settle at the bottom and you can extract it from this drainage pipe so you you're going you're going to get molten aluminium from uh, this drainage pipe at the bottom and this here is the reaction the equation at cathode that would uh, produce molten aluminium which is what we are, we are after now this sums up the entire extraction process of aluminium uh, from bauxite the first step was purification of bauxite and the second step was the electrolysis of molten alumina now I'm going to discuss a few things about uh, extraction of aluminium well, the number one thing is that aluminium is the most abundant uh, it's the it's the most abundant metal on the surface of the planet so abundant metal so that's aluminium but the process of extracting aluminium from bauxite is, is an expensive process firstly uh, the reason why it's uh, it's expensive is even though it's the most abundant uh, metal uh, the number one reason is that electrolysis is expensive so you you're using electricity so that's that's an expensive process remember in the extraction of iron you were using carbon and carbon was a very cheap um, uh, it was cheaply available so electrolysis on the other hand is expensive and the second step is that you would need uh, uh, anodes need frequent replacement because they burn away so they need frequent replacement
Lastly, I'm going to discuss a few properties and uses of aluminium. Now, the properties that make it very useful are, firstly, you have, uh, aluminium is very lightweight. It has a very, very low density uh, compared to other metals. So, so it's, uh, it's relatively lightweight. Um, secondly, it is resistant to corrosion. The reason why it's resistant to corrosion is that Aluminium oxide forms a tough non-porous uh, coating. So there's a tough non-porous coating over aluminium which um, protects it and prevents any reaction from with oxygen. So so it's resistant to corrosion. And thirdly, more more importantly, it's a, it's a very very good conductor of uh, electricity. So it's a very good conductor and of both heat and electricity because aluminium loses three electrons so so the delocalized electron cloud in aluminium is uh, has a lot more electrons compared to other metals so these three properties uh, define that most of the uses number one use uh, used for aluminium which is frequently used for aluminium is is aircrafts aircrafts are made out of aluminium simply because it's low density lightweight and resistant to corrosion so so you need aircrafts to be lightweight or any other large structures uh, they're mostly made from aluminium because of the of the lower density secondly you have overhead uh, high voltage transmission cables So you have these high voltage transmission cables that are made from aluminium because uh, simply because the resistance is going to be low, there's going to be better conductor. It's, it's a very good conductor, so it's uh, there's there's there going to be less losses, heat losses, and it's resistant to corrosion and it's also lightweight. So they're the two frequently used uh, um, uh, mentioned uses for aluminium.